Hey everyone, welcome to How To Cook That. Today we're going to look at how to do your own candy buffets and how much candy do you need to fill those containers, how to calculate that out and tips for setting it up to make it look good. The first thing you need to look at is what is your budget because that affects everything else. And then after you've decided how much you have to spend then you need to get some containers to put your candy in. So to start with let's look at what you already have. So look in your cupboard for things like uh, glass vases, they're always really good. And then after you've done that, if you're on a tight budget, go to a second hand store or a thrift store and see what glasses and containers you can find there because you can find some interesting containers uh, at those second hand stores. If you can, look for some pairs of containers that are the same so that you can have some symmetry on your table. You can also borrow containers of course if you've got a friend who's already had a wedding or a candy buffet then just ask if you can borrow some of these. The next thing is to figure out how much candy is going to fit in each of your containers. To do that we're going to use pasta here but you can use rice or whatever you've got handy and fill your container. And then tip that into a measuring jug. So that's two cups. And a half. And so then you can label that as that's two and a half cups. So now you know the cup volume of all your containers. You need to work out what weight of candy is going to fill up that volume. Now obviously different candy weighs different amounts for the same volume. So if you go to the website howtocookthat.net there's a link in the description below the video and go to the DIY candy buffet page. I've done a table there for you showing for one cup how many grams of the different types of candy you need. Basically the thing to keep in mind if you're on a budget is the more air you can keep in your container the less candy you're paying for obviously. So this is 100 grams of Maltesers. This also is 100 grams of Maltesers. Obviously because you've got your packets here, it's spreading them out, you're adding more air in your containers, so this is full, whereas this one's only half full, so you're going to have to buy more. This is 400 grams of M&Ms, and this is only 200 grams of wrapped lollies. So again, it's the same principle. You've got the wrapping is pushing them further apart, so you've got a lot more air in that container. Whereas this one, they're quite condensed together, they can fit nicely together, so you're going to need a lot of them to fill the container. So it's going to end up costing you a lot more to use something like M&Ms or mini M&Ms especially, in comparison to wrapped lollies. But that depends on your budget, whether that's an issue or not. Now you can spend all that money on jars and lollies, but if you don't set up your table nicely, it still doesn't look as great as it could. Simple things like adding labels make a big difference. You can print some out on your computer. I've used sequins here, but you can use ribbon and attach them to your containers. Then you can add a tablecloth or two. Try and stick to one or two colours. One thing that makes a big difference on candy buffets as well is if you can add some height in the centre. So you can use boxes, books, whatever you have lying around your house that is going to elevate the centre point of your candy buffet. Symmetry is your friend when it comes to candy and dessert buffets, so try and have some elements that are the same size and shape on either side of the table. Now most candy buffets will also have a centrepiece, like a cake or something like that in the middle. You don't have to use a cake, you can use feathers or a flower arrangement, something else that's non-food in the middle if you don't have a cake that you're using for the event. Now this candy buffet is still missing things, it needs something for people to serve with. Just a normal spoon will suffice for some containers. For deeper containers, tongs are useful, especially as the jar starts to empty. They allow people to reach down the bottom and get things. Now this candy buffet is starting to look pretty good, but it's still missing something, which a lot of people forget, which is here, the backdrop. The backdrop can make it just pop, make it look amazing. And don't think you have to keep it all candy on your buffet. You can mix it with desserts. Here I'm using the little plastic shot glasses and I've filled them with a range of different desserts. There's a link to all these dessert recipes in the description below this video. So when you're setting up, remember your backdrop, add some height to the table, some colour on your cloths, then your centrepiece and then your candy and your desserts. We've got chocolate cremo, we've got mini pavlovas, nougat, chocolate coated oreos, tiramisu custards, Cheesecake with mini macaroons, vanilla sponge with orange syrup and yogurt and currants, 
homemade honeycomb and raspberry and chocolate sphericals which you put into your mouth whole and they burst on your tongue. They're always lots of fun. Make sure you subscribe to How To Cook That. There's a new video every week.